Good morning. I am Deacon Lewis Peters. I'm Chancellor of the Maronite Eparchy of Our Lady of Lebanon of Los Angeles. I also serve as a deacon at St. Raymond Co-Cathedral in St. Louis, Missouri. This morning I'd like to uh, reflect a little on a passage from the Bible, from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. If you happen to have a Bible handy and would like to read along with me, uh, please turn to chapter 19 of John, verse 38 is where I'll begin. I'm using the Revised Standard Version of the uh, Bible, so the translation may be slightly different than the one that you may have. As we all always do, um, let's profess our faith in the Holy Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the one and only true God. Amen. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices and linen cloths, according to the burial customs of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And also, because it was the Jewish Passover, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Today, Jesus is in the tomb. He died on Friday and was buried that same day. In our Maronite church calendar, we call today Saturday of the Light, or sometimes the Saturday of the Awaited Light. Today, we are waiting. We are watching for something. Today in the church, there is no Eucharist. The tabernacle is empty. There is no divine liturgy celebrated today. The candles of the church are not lit. It's almost as if the Lord is gone from us. The one day of the year when the Lord seems to be absent. A funeral, a burial. Most of us have experienced the death and then the burial of a loved one, and there really is a sense of finality, a sense of closure, as we place our deceased in a grave and close it up. It's very final. We have been burying our dead from prehistoric times. They say that some human burials go back as far as 50,000 years ago. It's what we do for our dead. As Christians, we have great respect for the human body, even for a dead human body. Jesus was dead. There is no doubt about that. Those who pass out, those who are asleep, those in a coma are not put into a tomb. Only the dead are. Both Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus are mentioned before in the Bible and both had been secret followers of Jesus. They were afraid to be associated with him publicly. But now they step forward to claim his body. They threw aside their fear and attended personally as Jesus was buried. Jesus was dead and now buried. He would be gone from their sight forever. Joseph and Nicodemus were prominent Jewish leaders in their community, yet they found something attracted them to Jesus. They had wanted to become his disciples, but now it was over. Jesus died just like everyone else. Jesus was buried just like everyone else. His body would corrupt into dust just like everyone else. As they rolled a stone to seal his grave, there was a sense of sadness and sorrow that must have come over them. They thought he was the one they were waiting for, the one that all Israel 
was awaiting the Messiah, the Christ. Simply by handling a dead body, Joseph and Nicodemus had become ritually unclean, according to the Jewish law, and thus would be prohibited from participating in the Passover feast. They would have known this, and so did the hearers of John's Gospel 2,000 years ago. But did they really miss it? Did they really miss the Passover feast? No, they did not. The death of Jesus on the cross fulfilled the requirement of the Passover for Joseph and Nicodemus, and it does so for us to this very day. In our divine liturgy, the priest breaks the Eucharist, the body of Christ, and we pray, O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation. You are the forgiving sacrifice. You offered yourself as the lamb. Today for Christians, Jesus is the Passover lamb of God. What had started in Egypt by Moses, what we call the Passover of the angel of death, over a thousand years before Jesus, has now been fulfilled and completed by him. Another point in this gospel passage I'd like to reflect on is the tomb itself. It belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. It was close to where Jesus was crucified, so it was convenient. But the tomb also, as St. John tells us, had never been used before. It was a new tomb. A new tomb was an honor to be buried in. There were no others who had been buried there, so there was no corruption in that tomb. Jesus was untouched by the corruption of death, even the death of others. But our hope does not lie in an empty tomb. An empty tomb proves, proves nothing. Our hope lies in the resurrection of the Lord, which was to come after the tomb. But unlike Joseph and Nicodemus, we know what will happen next, what will happen tomorrow. Today we wait, tomorrow we rejoice. May God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one and only true God, amen.